everyone, and welcome to this episode of Writers in Fusion. I'm your host, Susan. We are here at the Cambridge Library in Massachusetts, live, or was live while we're filming this. <laughs> we're still alive. Uh, I'm here with the usual team uh, to start. Dave, Julie, Hi. Jen, and Ed's off camera, but he'll join us in a few minutes. And then we have our special guest critiquer, Amaria Orenstein, who's here. Orenstein. Amaria Orenstein. <laughs> and um, Amaria's with Gold Literary Agency in Boston. And she's uh, really, it's really nice to have you with us today. Thank you. It's lovely to be here. And we have our writer, John Leggett, is here from Maine. So we appreciate the drive that you took to get here. <laughs> It's great to have you. Thank you. So what we're going to do is we're going to have you read the story. I'll just read the summary, and then we'll start the critique after that. And as we've said before, back and forth with any questions that you have. So this is a novel within a novel. Uh, as a writer is tired of self-publishing and seeks a publisher for his new book. There were two flights of stairs from the sidewalk to Mary Never Street's front door. Each flight contained 11 steps, and it was her third consecutive day of making the climb. For Marion, the high-spirited woman of 82, to climb was more of an annoyance than an effort of labor. She paused when she reached the landing, not to rest, but to admire her panoramic view of the city. She enjoyed looking down on the landscaped homes and places of business that comprised the quaintness of Marshfield. They dotted the horizon, and she viewed them as if they were houses and hotels on her personal monopoly board. Until recently, she had driven her car up the winding hill that ran behind her house and parked in the small indentation of crabgrass that served as her driveway. Knowing her car was not available for 90-some days, she was reassigned or resigned to live with a limited amount of independence. Her groceries had to be delivered, dry cleaning was picked up and dropped off at the pleasure of the cleaning service, and she had resorted to making lists to ensure her trips to town utilized maximum efficiency. She blamed her daily climb up the two flights of stairs to be the result of statements made by that wet-behind-the-ears police officer, Jimmy Bromfeld. Judge Van Heusen hadn't been much help either, believing Jimmy's testimony over hers regarding the charge of reckless driving and then impounding her car. She felt some comfort in knowing she could continue her daily chat with Father Handerham. The church wasn't far enough to justify a taxi for her self-imposed talk with her favorite priest, and since losing her license, she walked to the confessional. Every morning, she vented to Father Hanrahan, giving her disgruntled position on the city council and other pet peeves that struck her fancy. The current exasperation was her battle with the local judicial system. Like Judge Van Heusen, the sympathy she expected to receive from her priest had been somewhat lacking. His subtle reminders that the confessional was not to be mistaken for the booth used for complaints in the local department store did not go unnoticed. Likewise, she was not oblivious to his long sighs that followed her daily rants, sighs that indicated his impatience regarding her private affairs before she got around to confessing her daily sins. Once she concluded her confession, Father Hanrahan assigned her a few Hail Marys or Our Fathers and sent her on her way. She had tried to appease the priest that morning. After a few minutes stewing over her latest courtroom incident, she tacked on a 65-year-old sin she had never confessed. Marion felt that revealing a sin, even of that vintage, might brighten Father Hanrahan's day if confessions by other members of the congregation weren't all that exciting. You know, Father, she began, I've always been reluctant to confess this, but after we beat Deerfield High for the championship, well, I, I sort of put out for the judge in the back seat of his car. Her confession was immediately followed by an unnecessary clarification. Of course, he wasn't Judge Van Heusen then, just good old Tommy. The clarification was said with an attitude of, you know how it was in those days. She then continued with a nonchalant, Lord knows, it wasn't as if I went all the way or anything. Yes, Marion, the Lord does know, the father agreed. And while I appreciate you making a clean slate of things, I think after 65 years, God has probably let that particular sin fall by the wayside. Following a momentary silence, she resumed. Her tone continued to carry a sound of justification, as if she was explaining the judge's recent courtroom decision. Well, anyway, I mention it now because, personally, I think that's why he extended the suspension of my license last week. 
I think there's still a bit of resentment over him, you know, not getting everything he wanted. He even gave me some cock and bull story that night about wanting to marry me, or at least that's what he said when he unbuttoned my blouse and, well, you know. Father Hanrahan didn't seem concerned about her backseat sinning that took place in the judge's car, but in acknowledgement of the act, he added an additional five Hail Marys to her penance. During her climb up the stairs that morning, she reflected on her most recent citation. It was the second one that month, and from the first step to the landing, she cursed the name Jimmy Gromfeld. Big shot Jimmy, she thought, who prayed around town in his uniform. He was certainly all decked out a week earlier when he cited her for reckless driving, strolling up to the car like he was so important. Marion almost laughed at all the contraptions on the policeman's belt. Recalling the incident, she now realized her initial comments were probably not the best way to avoid a ticket. You auditioning for the next Batman movie, Jimmy? He bristled as he stood there in his shirt, sporting creases sharp enough to shave with. I'll have to see your license and registration, ma'am. What for? You know very well who I am, and that little sticker on my license plate is obviously current. Perhaps I should have to see your license. Are you old enough to drive now? Her question was made as a reminder that on many occasions during his infancy, she had been his babysitter. Jimmy ignored the reference. I'm sorry, ma'am, but any time we're called to a scene of an accident, we're required to see identification. Scene of an accident? Just what accident are you talking about? And who's the we you're referring to? I don't see anyone else around. As she asked the question, she fumbled through her purse with the pretense of a search. I can't seem to find my license, she told me. And stop using that ma'am stuff on me. I changed too many diapers filled with your poop to listen to that nonsense. Maybe someday you'll find a nice girl and settle down, although you'll find diaper changing is not so much fun as pulling people over for no apparent reason other than to harass them. Jimmy knew she still had other, another two weeks remaining on her suspension, and her banter was more or less a distraction from producing her license. In his effort to avoid embarrassing her, he took the registration and stared at it with as much diplomacy as possible. Marion thumped on the steering wheel. As I said, there's no accident here. Well, unless the high-speed turn you took here that knocked Mrs. Manning's mailbox clear into her yard was intentional, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and call it an accident. This statement from Bromfeld held his own tone of annoyance. I'll have to call this in, Ms. Everstreet. I'll just be a minute. Marion was well aware that Jimmy had it in for her. If he had his way, catching her driving without a license would probably result in prison time. She continued thumping the steering wheel as she recalled the scene in the courtroom two weeks earlier. It's the proverbial straw judge, Jimmy testified. You can see by her record that she has numerous speeding violations, many of which were issued right on Main Street. Marion jumped up from her chair. Objection! Objection! she yelled. The judge turned his gaze toward Marion and peered over the top of his glasses. The acknowledgement of her objection was received with a bit of frustration, and he ex exhibited a lengthy exhale. Go ahead, Marion, he told her. Go ahead? Yes, you need a reason if you're objecting to the witness's statement. Marion looked around at the spectators as if one of them might have a good reason. Well, she began, I believe the use of the term proverbial straw is, is, the voice trailed off as she searched for the right word, the perfect jargon needed from one of the TV courtroom shows she watched. Oh, you know what I mean, Judge. The word is right on the tip of my tongue. It's that legal term lawyers always use. Judge Van Heusen raised an unsympathetic eyebrow. I'm afraid if the word you seek is refusing to jump off your tongue tip, we'll have to continue without its presence. I'm suspending your license for 30 days. You're to relinquish it to the clerk. Following these proceedings and sign the necessary paperwork. Prejudicial, she yelled out. Prejudicial? Yes, that's the word I was trying to think of, for my objection. She then pointed a finger at Bromfeld. That proverbial straw thing, he said, suggests I've had prior incidents. I do believe it swayed your verdict. Jimmy was still sitting in the witness stand and felt he needed to further justify the judge's ruling. Your Honor, she was given a warning a day prior to the ticket for speeding through the parking lot of the mall. And I object to that. This time she had her reason ready. It's hearsay. Thank you. I think your writing is really good, and I enjoy reading about Mary, and I think she's spicy. <coughs> she, she has a good voice. I have two main things, so that so, so that my my um, 
So things I want to talk about are about whether or not I think your writing is good. I think your writing is great. So there are two main things that hit me, and they kind of feed into each other. The first is that there's so much back and forth between what happened, what's happening now, and what happened a week ago, and then what happened two days ago, and what happened <coughs> two days, 60 years ago. I'm having a hard time tracking it all. Uh, maybe others didn't, but for me it was kind of a lot of back and forth. And as part of that, there were some, you know, there were some places where you had play-by-play, -play, which I really enjoy, but there were other places that were kind of summarized that I thought would be good as their own scene. So I think if you combined with maybe doing some of it in more order, you know, she's right now she's walking down the street and she's thinking back to when she got the ticket, she's thinking back to when she was in the, the court. If you do a lot of that in order, it doesn't mean she can't think back to something, but I think if you expanded certain sections and put them more in order, it would be a lot easier for me to read. And, and I want some of these things to be expanded because I like her character and I want to read more about what's going on. And there are a couple of places I can point out. I mean, when she's at the top of page two, when she's walking to the church, um, oh, and this was, I guess I'll say this too and then I'll pass it on. So as she's walking and we're learning about a lot of things, like let's say we're learning about this ticket that she got. You can go play by play on when she got the ticket, which is what you end up doing. But we can also maybe learn things about her. Maybe as she's taking her walk, she's running into people she knows. And through the dialogue with them, we learn more about what's happening with her. You won't believe it, Jimmy just gave me a ticket again. So she doesn't have to be telling us diapers. <laughs> so she doesn't have to be telling us all that. It can be with interacting through other people that will hear more of her voice. And the whole thing with the priest, I thought that was really funny. So, um, I, and I know there's some stuff. You know, John had actually sent his whole chapter, and I had to cut it for the show. There were some scenes that followed that I thought were pretty funny. So sorry, I had to cut them for this. But I want John to share those. I love these stories. I know. Too. Well, I can always share them offline. <laughs> So that's how I wanted to open it up. Maybe you want to comment or maybe others want to jump in. Can I jump in with a question before you even comment on that? And I, I, I just, this is something that I, I wondered from the minute I started, right? And I'll agree, Marion is a captivating character. She's feisty, she's funny, I enjoyed it. Um, I did have some also places where I thought that I, I would just cut to kind of get to your point faster. But most importantly, before I can kind of assess any of this, I have to ask the question of her relationship to the writer who is tired of self-publishing and seeks a publisher for his new book, which is how you summarize the book. Because I'm kind of afraid you're going to tell me she's a character in his book, and then all of this is for naught. Ah. Uh, <laughs> at the end of the first chapter, um, it goes back to her climbing the stairs, mm -hmm. and she's going into her house, and things have been happening when she's been away from her home, uh, inside her home, and somebody's been going in there and doing things. And she's very concerned about that. And she hears music playing because the radio is on this time and she, and to make to, to speed things up. She, she when she gets in there, uh, Sid at that point of Marion's life, Sid stops typing on his laptop because he knows what's going on in the house because he's the author writing the story. Wait, we, it's haven't, not in we this. haven't met Sid right. yet. So we're and starting the, with a character who is not your protagonist. And, right. The protagonist is writing the novel of Marion. That's what I thought. Ah, so is most of your novel about, is it the story of Marion, or is it the story of Oh, it continually weaves in and out. Like, um, oh, Sid yeah. is a, uh, he's in a writer's group. Um, he has a... Are we in the book? He, he, yeah, he will be, yes. Yes, mm -hmm. this, like this scenario <laughs> will be in the book. You, we just, just that Sid, a Sid travels to, you know, Boston to, you know, to do this. Excellent. Um, but in the writer's group, when Race he gets life. comments from the group, he can go home uh, to, and is he living with this guy who's moved in, who's a really good friend of his, who's on his on down and out, and he moves in. He really doesn't want him there because he wants to write and be, you know. So he, the guy that moves in is his sounding board. Uh -huh. So the dialogue between those is, yeah, his, what happened to his writer's group? Like the publisher, too. When he first comes home, after he meets with the publisher, he's, he's really ticked off. Because the publisher wants me to kill Marion. And he wants, the publisher wants her to have this young niece who's like, you know, wants some sex in this book, you know. And that's not what my book is about. So this whole thing is a writer writing a novel. Well, I, th I think we're about to tell you to kill Marion too, unfortunately. Because, oh, no, no. because you're breaking a major rule though, like you don't start with a dream. You don't start, like this isn't Marion's story. You're getting story. us invested in a character who doesn't uh -huh. even it's not exist. her story. Mm -hmm. 
it's mm. the it's the writer's oh, story. Like you need to start one. with. He's, so she's not your protagonist. I, I want to make an alternate case. I agree mm. with you. You're you're breaking a cardinal rule. I think it works well though. I, I think there is potentially a way to do it, but you would have to dramatically reduce this opening scene. You couldn't go more than a couple of paragraphs without making clear that somebody that there's a hand above writing her as a character. Okay. And then we have to start hearing about his predicament and the troubles with his editor much earlier on because it's like introducing a character who gets killed off at the end of the first chapter. Mm -hmm. It's a huge turnoff for agents and editors because we're invested in somebody who's irrelevant to the story. Now Marion is not exactly irrelevant because she is the protagonist mm -hmm. of your protagonist's story, right. which is interesting, but we need your actual protagonist to make that work because we're all reading this as though Oh la di da! This is a story about Marion, but it's not. Well, when you when you really think about it, right? And I know that you know, that's a rule, but you're when we read a book, we're invested in the character who also doesn't exist, even the protagonist. So is it so we bad to start to off? <clears throat> well, I, that's why I'm saying that you might be able to work, but but I can't go. I've gone six pages now, believing that I'm reading a story that I'm not actually. That's not actually even if, your story. Even if that story well, is really... Well, I like the way yeah, together. The, the story mm -hmm. of Marion mm -hmm. is a well-plotted... Like, her life is well-plotted in, in in, within the book. Mm -hmm. I want the reader to be... When when you start reading, once the, you get into the book, and you start reading a chapter, you're not sure if, it's, if you're reading Sid or for the first couple paragraphs, mm -hmm. And, or when you see Marion, you go, oh good, I'm back to Marion, because Marion's got a good story. The, the storyline that I've laid out for her, and her life and backstory, I think are all pretty good. I'm not questioning that, and, and I, have, I have okay. no doubt that that's the case. I'm saying without Sid's existence, you're going to have a very hard time mm. so, selling it. Selling it. Selling it. <laughs> yeah, I don't so, want to be so blunt. Selling the yes. idea of it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I do think it's a bit unfortunate because I like this opening. Um, I did think that you went on about her staircase a little too much. You know, I did have some quibbles with, with the nitty gritty um, on a sentence level here and there, but I, I like what you're doing. It's just way too long. And I, I think if you could, and I, I think as you can see, and as people will see when you post my comments online, there are lots of places where you can cut and make this shorter and maybe bring Sid in almost immediately could make it work. But without Sid in your opening chapter, I, I hate to say that it's dead on arrival when it reaches okay. an if, agent or an editor's, well, to an editor's to save me a lot of time. <laughs> um, and I don't necessarily agree with the rule, I just know that yeah. that's the way, the way that this works. Yeah, it's good to have you. Marianne's story is so interesting, why not have yeah, Marianne's story? Yeah, why not just make, yeah, who I've needs thought of that. Yeah. I mean, because um, I, I, you had a great time writing this. Yeah, I did. And I felt it. I felt you were just rolling. It just I bet you wrote it in 20 minutes, didn't you? Oh. I bet well, this then, took weeks and months, but it feels yeah, like 20 yeah, minutes. It, and that's it, what it, makes it, it so good. It, it was smooth. It was fun. I enjoyed I loved her character. I loved feisty old days. They shoot from the hip and the hell and everything else. Uh, and then to have her not a real character, I would find very disappointing. Exactly. Mm. When you may be able to, well, and then the second fear that I had when I first started reading is, you, the entire story is based on a writer writing about writing. <clears throat> Red light. <laughs> if I saw that at, on a cover flap, I'd say, yes, forget it. I know all about writers writing about writing. I'm doing it. You know, it, it, it's, it's an uh, exhausting thing. It's like a coal miner writing about coal mining. I, it's just, they're putting your head in the dirt and keep going. It, it, that's not really a story. The, the frustrations are there, and everything, but who cares? Mary it's also Ann. been done to it's something that we consider to be yeah, cliche. Yeah, Mary Ann is an unique character. Mm -hmm. She came alive in my mind. Why drop her into a secondary role? I bring her right out. Front. I think that's phenomenal advice. I have thought about that in, in getting rid of the, the, the author. Yeah, if, if she's worthy of being in someone else's story. Can you tell us a bit more about her story? Maybe that will help us. Um, her. Well, for one thing, I, I reduced her age from 82 to 62 uh, oh, for a she reason. She ends up marrying the judge to get out of the judge. Uh, no. <laughs> I like uh, that. But she has a... Um, can judges be 82 when they're 
I oh, think in this small town, um, oh, you know, Marshfield is really not identified. Is, it, is this Marshfield, Mass? No, it's just Marshfield. Oh, okay. Oh, when, oh, I, okay. when I started, I first, I first was thinking about the Midwest. You know, uh -huh. some, yeah. um, non existent. Yeah. But her humdrum life that is apparent to everyone that she went through is only a facade for what she really did, which yeah, is that's rather a great covert story. stuff. Yeah, that's, that's a great story. Right. I want to agree, yeah. that is your story. Okay. And not only does, it's not just that the character who's not really a character is gonna be problematic for you. Agents and editors see writers writing about writing all the time that okay. we don't really yeah. wanna see. That's I think you're right, that's not the most interesting story. We've all been there, I, I, I if feel you're all that, writers, you all But I feel that they only can. You don't it's want to be reminded of it when you're reading. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah her, her real life behind the scenes is just so stressful. Uh, yeah, because sure. it's well, I want to know her real life. I want to know more about her. Her hobbies. Is yeah. she married? Is she widowed? What she does, what she did, if she volunteers, what her career was. And her, and just so good You'll with her voice. You'll have to buy the book. I'll have to buy the book. I do say, uh, now that I know she's a character, I may not have as much power. Pack as much punch, is that the word? What? Um, but I didn't like, there were two flights of stairs from the sidewalk to Mary Never Street's front door. I would rather, <laughs> yeah, he has my, uh, my, my rough I have your copy. Mary Never Street effort, effortlessly climbed the two flights of stairs for the third consecutive day. And then he could go I into, agree. It felt a little is, passive. It was more yes, about the staircase yes, than it was about her. her. Put yes. me in her shoes. Let yes. me feel her. And God bless. She's 82. She's climbing those stairs. All right. She's nice. Now she's 62. So God bless. Yeah. I also yeah. felt that first paragraph dragged up. It was just yes. too much about the staircase. It was okay. overly emphatic. Yeah. But I liked her view. I gave you a check close, a check there. Um, the, uh, being at the top of the stairs and looking out, as if it were her own monopoly board. That's clever. And I initially had her pointed out, and I don't know what the version is now because I've revised this so many times. That she lives up on this high hill. You get this view. Yeah. Yeah. She could stop on the yes. second. She wasn't even all the way to the top. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, it makes us feel that climb. Okay. But well, when, you, when you put no, it in the past, she's, she's not out of breath. Oh, she has definitely, right, right, right. Okay. I forgot. She's in better shape than I am. <laughs> <laughs> out of breath after two seconds. Um, but but the same way that that opening paragraph is a bit passive because it's focused on the, on, on the stairs, in the second paragraph, knowing her car was not available for 90 some odd days. Mm -hmm. Again, it's about the car, it's not about her. Yes. Make that about her. Okay. And, and then when you go back, she blamed her daily climb on the two flights. Uh, this just gets a little wordy for me. Yes. Um, I, I would try, she blamed her daily climb up the two flights on statements made by, not flights up the stairs to be the result of state, which is very, there's just too many words in that sentence. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd also like you to get to that a little bit faster. So if you could just condense those first two. And there's also an ongoing relationship with um, Marion and Jimmy Brownfield. Oh, I said that. Okay. Okay. Really? Just huh. Well, yeah, if somebody's see. breaking into her house, she has to call the police. Right. Right. Because oh, Jimmy I see. is. Yes. The police. They don't get along. Yes. And he's, you know, his house is under. So, you know, he's. So, anyway, uh, he's, he's, he's in. He's, he's a uniform. small town. He's, he's the involved. Only, yeah, he's, he's the only He's cop. a jerk, but he's yeah. wearing a uniform that gives him authority yeah. to be in the place. Yeah, he's a more official he party really fight. Like party yeah. fight is, is he he's, supposed to seem like No, he's not really a jerk. He's just an angry old lady. Yeah, yeah yes. and um, not knowing the rest of this chapter and what happened, the reason she dislikes him, not because of this ticket, but something he did or she suspects he did in high school. Uh -huh. um, you know, he and his friends went around and they kidnapped baby Jesus' to come in <laughs> and <laughs> nativity oh. scene. Oh, John, uh, there's such a, a rich story there's so much depth. Oh, there. I, I think that you will really lose when you by making this yeah. a secondary story. Okay, okay. okay. I, That's, I think it's it's a good really will lose some of its flavor. Okay. Um, can I, a, a couple of places where I wanted to point out where I thought you were a little expository, explaining to readers things that we already know or don't need to <coughs> explain to us. Um, on page on a page two, the church wasn't far enough to justify a taxi for her self-imposed talk with her favorite priest since losing her license. We already know she lost her license. Um, you, I think you tell okay. us three or four times, so I, I just highlighted, you know, we get it. Um, I also felt her self-imposed talk, it, it's odd, it just the church wasn't far enough to justify a taxi. She walked to the confessional to vent. <laughs> Every morning, right? So every morning, she walked to the confessional every morning to vent. I think is just so much more direct than belaboring her struggle. It's it's very clear, and so it starts to feel a little like oh, it starts to feel a little overkill. 
I also realized recently, I was told recently, um, not being a Catholic myself, that there is no more confessional. So oh, there is what? Uh, I didn't know it's that. It's more of a... Uh, you have to do it online. You tweet your sins? It's certainly not a daily. It's a blog, yeah. Wow. But, but, but she can certainly you know, visit her priest every day. Yes. Um, as a counselor. And I want to, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go I ahead. just want to make a quick point, and then I want to hear from Jed. Or from Jed. 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 Well, I'll just call Jed. 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 Um, <laughs> we're talking about words. We have a blog up on our website that has to do with using, you know, what words you do or don't need. So even on the first page, we have, um, until recently, she had driven her car up the winding hill that ran behind the house, and always, I had always parked in the small indentation of crabgrass. Well, when you think of indentation of crabgrass, you don't picture a huge area, you picture a little area, so you don't need the word small. So, mm, okay, right? yeah. so think, or when someone, the example we have is cottage, you don't have to say small cottage unless it belongs to the Kennedys. You know, <laughs> so there are a lot of yeah. words like that, that and it's, you should never do that first pass, it's an editing thing that you do. Because okay. you want to, you don't want to be worrying about your editing when you're trying to get your, mm -hmm. your thoughts on people. But I wanted to, you had something to say, and then I want to hear what Jenna No, I, I will say that um, when my, my daughters went for the fresh oil of communion. I was shocked that, that the confession was actually side by side looking the priest in the face. So that was news to me too, but your friend is correct. Um, that's just a little side note. Did the twins go together or did they go in twins? They, no, they went separate because they're two separate people. That's so funny. Like that one, yeah. But they went separate and they were both equally nervous though, Julie. Um, but you know, I, this, I agree with everybody. I, I, um, Marion, Marion is feisty. Um, I don't necessarily like her because I think she's kind of a jerk. As you were saying, I don't, I don't see the cop as the jerk, I see her as the jerk, which is okay. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to, she just has to be interesting, right? She doesn't have to be likable, and she is interesting, um, but some, but unsympathetic. Um, but I would like just to kind of say what, um, what Sue was saying was that there's a lot of um, backstory and um, a lot of telling. And um, Ed will always say, show, don't tell. Um, and so, you, you know, a lot of these things should be scenes rather than telling us that it happened, put us into the scene as it happened. Then you do a little bit of that with the court scene, but a lot of it is just kind of telling us what has happened, um, which doesn't which doesn't pull us in. So I, I would just say try to cut back on the backstory. I would definitely make it Marion's story um, because I do like her voice, um, and I think she's she's funny and feisty. Um, but definitely do it as scenes. Well, I like your idea of running into people uh, yeah, because I, I really enjoy writing dialogue. Oh, good. Um, so that would, that goes with what I, you know. Okay. And then I would get across and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's, and I could do uh, what Jen was talking about. Mm -hmm. too. Yeah, yeah, I, a I agree with other people. I mean, when, when I read the summary and then I started reading the story, my reaction was, I don't see any of this in the abstract. Uh, and I, I, I'm not particularly taken with Marion herself, uh, so I'm not in that camp either. <laughs> um, I mean, what my comment was not much seems to happen, but I'm not a big literary novel fan. Mm -hmm. so. But but I do think your your criticism holds. You you do need to shorten these. It, it needs <clears throat> to happen a little bit faster. You yeah. need to get <clears throat> to the point a little bit faster. Yeah. And the, the kinds of things you were talking about that you know maybe she has things in her background. Maybe she's. Uh, you know, been pulling strings or something in the town, or is, it, is this force to be reckoned with that nobody's aware of? That sounds interesting to me. That sounds like a... Um, yeah, because her life uh, like is, in, is in danger. Would, well, I would want to see hints of that mm. in, right up front. I would, you know, uh, I mean, you do say her personal monopoly board, which gave me something to think about if she, if she regards this as, you know, Oh, she, she has right. she manipulated that. The chess game of the city. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I would want to see more of that. I would want to see hints mm. of that right up front. Like, yeah, there's something more to, to her than just you know, yeah. I'm I'm complaining old lady. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's, that's an excellent, an excellent point. Yeah. I do too. But, but well written, obviously. Yeah. 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 Thank you. We have about thirty seconds left. Is there anything you want to ask? Um, I, you know, just thank you. Um, a lot of these things that you know go back to the drawing board. Um, the reason I didn't want to eliminate the writing angle of it, the writer, because.
Yes, I was unaware of it, it could play to that. Oh, I was yeah. like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> uh, because I was, I was really, I, I kind of wanted to just do Marion's story. Oh. And uh, your comments today are, are feeding me in that direction because uh, it's going to be a fun book to write. I know that. Oh, I did have fun. It sounded books. like you yeah. were, the first six yeah. pages, it was a, a, a sleigh ride. You were having yeah. fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. and when they kidnapped the Jesus, it's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I used to live in Ohio. People used to do that. That's yeah. <laughs> they, you know, they, the babies wound up on the uh, steps of the uh, newspaper building. Arms were tied behind their backs and, oh. and duct tape over their oh. mouths. And yeah, you know. that's cool. And it was like a real scandal in the town. And yeah, so she she suspects Jimmy did was in charge of that, but there's no never been any proof. Uh -huh. um, so there's some. Why does she care? Like that's my that's what I'm uh -huh. most interested in is why she cares. She's not the mayor. She's not a government mm -hmm. official in any well, way. She seems holier like, than now. Like, oh, she yeah. seems like she's above everybody else. So I can see which her Which makes me think down. she has some dirty seat yeah. I mean, obviously oh, yeah. she uh, jumped the judge in the back seat of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She didn't give it all up. Yeah. Nope. 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 No. Or so she said. <laughs> <days then. laughs> right. What's her definition of not well, giving it up? If she's 82 years old, she doesn't give a hoot what anybody else thinks. Right. She would just shoot from the hip and, and tough. Right. You know, I, I like that attitude. What about if she's As I approach that age, you know. But now she's 60. Well, now there's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that it works as well at 62. I don't know. Yeah, so no, no, no. It's too feisty. Uh, well, one of, one of my concerns <laughs> was if the judge is her age, you know, would they both be still, you know, 82, still Bible? alive? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. And what age can I bring her down to to make that realistic? Because uh, it doesn't have to be 62, but... 75. Uh, I have a 97-year-old year friend who still goes to work every single <gasps> day. I mean, phenomenal. Things, right? Mm. I have an 84-year-old client whose book is coming out in two months. I mean, people so are active. 82, yeah. 82, 82 is not 82 old is okay. I think 82 yeah. is okay. You know, he might be getting to, ready to retire as a judge, but there's yeah. no reason that he's... Yeah, okay. 82 is not as old as it used I to be. I wouldn't go down to 62. Except no, for no, the woman here, she thinks 30 is totally old. She's too young for how she thinks. Yes. 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 Yeah, maybe okay. high 70s. Okay. Yeah, 75. I don't think it works if she's less than 75. Okay, okay. That works, I think. I think it sounds great. Thank I you really all. do. I think you have Thank a, you. a lot going on here, and everything that you've added to it, I just think it sounds like a big story. So well, thank you. For coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, Amaria. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me. I thank you, everyone, Thanks for joining us for this episode of Writers in Fusion, and we will see you next time. Keep writing.